DGP is supposed to be stateless. So each request that I send should have no impact on the next request. And obviously request smuggling violates that. But even if you ignore request smuggling, there are some other cases when HP can become stateful. And if you don't realize this in test for it, you can miss some quite interesting vulnerabilities. For example, some servers do more validation on the first request sent over any given connection. So on this target, there's an SSOF vulnerability. And now if we try to hit this internal host directly, well, they detect that the host header is wrong and they just issue us with a, a redirect. And you can send that over and over and you'll get the same thing every time. And But the thing is, this server is only doing the validation of the host header on the first request on each connection. So if so, I've just made a custom action called connection state attack, which basically takes this and it smuggles it behind a valid, genuine, normal looking request. And so all you've got to do is first send this, see what the normal response is, and then hit this button. And now it will smuggle the request. And behold, we've just gained access to the admin panel via the SSRF. And once again, the only way to access this is by smuggling this request. So if you do it directly, don't see anything. We can use the logger to see what's actually happened behind the scenes. So when I'm sending these requests with the, with, with the repeater, every single one is sent on a different connection ID, as you can see from this column that I've switched on here. But when I hit that magic button with the custom action, then it sends this innocent precursor request with a valid host header. And then it sends the, the malformed one uh, that I had in the repeater. And the power of this is this is not just limited to, uh, to host header attacks. In principle, any kind of server site, any kind of server level validation could be bypassed using this technique. And now thanks to this custom action, you can test for it simply by pressing a button. Uh, if we just have a look at the code un underneath, all it's doing is it's it's taking the input request and it's sending a simplified version to the target URL uh, with a legitimate host header and without any malformed headers or anything like that. And then it's sending the actual attack immediately after it and setting the response over there. So yeah, hope you find it useful. Uh, please note you will need to be using the latest version of Burp Suite to perform this attack uh, as it uses a, a new feature that was just added to uh, around making it easier to reuse connections like this. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Only other thing is, uh, this is my first time making this kind of demo video with an audio narration. So let me know what you think, if you like it, or if you think I should just uh, stick to writing blog posts. Thanks for listening.